have uh, just one other couple of stories I'd like to tell about a grumpy captain admiral, if you don't mind, do you? I hope this is the one I'm thinking. I've never read it. I'll remind you. You've never read it. No, you wouldn't. I guess we met the grumpy captain. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. That's right. So, uh, so we had a captain that would fly, have a, a, a pilot fly him up in a, uh, S, a peach craft, SNB, SNB, fly him up from Washington, D.C., he would land at our base, he would get out, he would get on an airship, and then he would go take off with the crew, and he would fly around, but he would go to sleep. He would go up topside and take a, a nap. And he was getting his flight time. That's the way he got his flight time. He'd fly up from Washington and then go on this flight out, maybe a couple, three hours, and come back, and he'd have his time done for the month. So uh, one time he comes up, he does that same thing. He's up topside, he's sleeping, he's got a... Uh, uh, vest, uh, help me here. Uh, May West. May West vest, thank you. And, on, and he's sleeping in it. And they, they're out there, it's been out long enough that the gas had burned off, so they came down. They have a big bag that picks up water and it, to compensate for, and then they pump it into tanks to compensate for the used up fuel. So they drop in to pick up the um, bag of water for to compensate for the fuel, and the pilot misjudged and it's in the water. The airship is now in the water. But the bag is over it, the, just the bottom part of the airship is in the water, and he pushes the emergency. Oga! Oh, I didn't mean to wake anybody up here. Oga, oga! So, man, this captain, you know, that's quite a wake up call. And he jumps up and he's a little dazed, I think. He runs aft and down a ladder, and there is the ocean right there rushing into the car. And he pulls his toggles and steps off into the ocean. Oh. Oh, no. And his weight was just enough to release the airship tension, and it floated up. <laughs> He's down here, and they're up there, and they get everything started up, and they're radioing. Uh, there's a captain uh, 150 miles uh, from shore. Uh, they didn't mention his name. They should have. Uh, he's, uh, we, we could, could you divert some ships? And so, uh, God, ships were all over the Atlantic, that part of the Atlantic, were diverted to try and pick up this. They finally got him, brought him aboard, and Captain, or Admiral, they said, uh, you know, we could bring charges because he abandoned ship without being ordered to do that. I, it was a little technical thing, but they didn't pursue it. They let him off. He was SOPA, Senior Officer President of Float. Well, yeah, yeah, in a way, I guess he was. So uh, we hadn't seen him now for six or seven months, and there he is again. He flies up. This guy has flown him up. He gets out of his beach. He gets in the airship, and he is pissed off, very upset, very angry. And he's chewing the enlisted men out. The food's terrible. Uh, who the hell's running this ship? You know, this is terrible. Nothing's going right here. And he just ripped and ripped and ripped the whole flight. He comes back. He gets on the ladder to go down the ladder to the ground, and he had forgotten his briefcase. So he says to one of the enlisted men, Mister, give me that briefcase. And he reaches up, gets the briefcase, and he takes it, and he's like this, and he steps off the ladder. He didn't realize the kite had kited up about 15 feet. So he steps off the ladder and takes about a two turn. I, do, I wasn't a witness to this, but it, supposedly he took two turns in the air and broke his leg. And we never saw him again. He <laughs> <laughs> never came up for his flight time after that. Okay, well, that these was are. That's the story I wanted to hear again. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, after I left the squadron, I'd done my four years and I was uh, coming back to go uh, to Cal Poly. And, Gene was a native of San Luis Obispo, so it was logical I come here. I graduated from here. And so I got out, but about oh, six months after I got out, an airship went down in the Atlantic. Uh, I think uh, 12 crewmen were killed, um, and that rolled them up. And that was the end of airships, as far as the Navy was concerned. It was a big deal. I think Goodyear had a lot of influence with the Navy Department, but even that, they just decided, you know, the airship had so many limitations. If the wind was blowing across the hangar, you couldn't get it out of the hangar. If the snow was falling, it bent the bag down. Uh, it, uh, yes, it could stay up for uh, hundreds of hours. It was just a remarkable thing for just getting around. It was great for anti-submarine warfare, but it had its real limitations. Now, the Army is buying a lot of airships now. Did you uh, run into any airships in Iraq or Iran? 
or I mean uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. That's right. They supposedly have them over bases now, hmm. and they've got all kinds of electronic. What say something? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So they use them as um, as what's like a eye in the sky. Yes. So it's on a tether cord. Exactly. So instead of having a tower that erects itself like off the back of a trailer and takes up so much space, right. also wind and tying it down, they actually uh, float these up and use them as a rotary camera. And they can see on a clear day in the desert. It's usually clear. Um, because it's not not too much weather, it's um, it can see sometimes for anywhere from five to ten miles, and they and they've got a, a really sharp eye, don't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they can pick up somebody uh, they're uh, on crawling or in infrared, yeah, yeah, infrared at night, mm -hmm. day, and everything. Right. So my point is that maybe there is some hope for the airship mm -hmm. in that world in that way, and I thank you all for your kind attention. Mm -hmm. administration has been beset by many problems, but it's had